podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, spinning, sometimes crochet, sometimes dyeing but always fibre based fortnightly podcast. And once again I start this podcast with an apology because I am a week late. Things have been really really busy uh, in university with the end of term etc but I will catch up with all that at the end of the podcast. But yes apologies uh, I am a week late so those of you that are new viewers hello welcome <clears throat> obviously I'm not late for you uh, so yes, I hope you like what you see uh, and if you are a new or return, no, if you are a regular or returning viewer then welcome back, it's lovely to have you back. Um, yes, on this quite sunny Saturday morning, it's the 22nd of May uh, 2021, um, yeah we've had a couple of really really bad stormy days so it's nice to see a little bit of blue sky, the, the plants and the trees have taken a bit of a battering but all is calm this morning thankfully because today I am meeting up finally with some knitting chums so uh, yes it's been the first chance that we've all been able to kind of get together in terms of timetables schedules and legally I guess so yes we're off to a little cafe uh, which is why my hair is still wet I'm busy recording before I go out and do that um, not sure whether we're sitting outside or inside so We'll have to take the life jackets and the umbrellas and the uh, sou'westers just in case the rain kicks back in later on. Anyway, um, what have I got in store for you today? Um, three, four knitting projects that uh, even though I haven't been here for a while and things have been super busy, I have made quite a bit of progress on, I think. I can't quite remember where I was last time, to be honest. Um, so yeah, three or four knitting projects to show you, a bit of spinning to show you, but that is about it. And then I will do some chatter at the end. Oh, and I have made an acquisition, but I don't have it with me, but I'll talk about that in a moment. So anyway, with that in mind, how are you? Hope things are well, hope you are busy, hope you are keeping busy with your projects, etc. Um, yes, things are opening up here in the UK in terms of uh, restrictions, but... I don't know how long for we'll see cases are slowly rising again with the um the indian variant of the the uh, of covid so yes we'll see what that happens but i think as more and more people get vaccinated hopefully things will start to ease soon but anyway let's not get into that now you are here for knitting so what am i wearing this is my um stephen west exploration station exploration station or inspiration station either one of those two but yes uh, so I'm going to be wearing my green jumper later on so I thought I would just matchy matchy you know um so knitting what have I been up to so uh the biggest progress probably has been on my Zweig so this is a Caitlin Hunter pattern um has been out for ages this is my second one uh and I think this is where we are so far so I think, uh, da, 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 I think I need to just try it on uh, because I'm I'm probably about ready to start a bit of ribbing. And this is Superwash, um, Superwash High Twist Merino Nylon Mix, both of them. This lighter green is my hand dyed, uh, as I've said a couple of times if you've been here before. And this is a Fru Valborg. Um, Merino Twist, I think hers is called, in Borderline. So yes, yeah, so I know it's going to stretch a little bit, so I don't want to make it too long, knowing that it will probably stretch because it is super wash, and that's, and it feels like it might. The the fabric isn't particularly tight or taut, therefore there's a little bit of uh, flexibility in it. So I think it, it probably will have a little stretch once it's finished it feels like that you know what I mean it kind of feels like it's gonna I'm not gonna block it really other than just dampen it down <clears throat> I don't need to um, uh, pin block it or put the wires or anything on it I don't think so yes so round and round having gone round and round for quite some time 3.25 I think I am on I had to adjust uh, needle sizes and therefore adjust gauge a little bit but very happy so far but yes I need to get a longer the longer wire on that and uh, have a little try on before I hit the, the ribbing just to check. Um, but yeah, really happy with the colours and perfect for spring uh, when it finally arrives. May has been so grim with us here in the UK, really wet, really cold. So hopefully soon we'll have a bit of spring summer weather. 
uh, and that'll be ready for then she says we know how this goes um, so that one is that ticking away very nicely and then uh, my hand spun so this is all out of hand spun this is my sneffeld shawl that's danish uh this is my sneffeld shawl by fiber tails so this has got some quite good progress i think i can't remember like i say where i was last time so this is and this is really weird because this looks like a dark brown here but actually in well depending on the light it's supposed to be black jacob that was the fiber that i spun but um, it is definitely a deep brown black, if you see what I mean, rather than a blue black, obviously. I mean, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen any blue sheep, but <clears throat> but yeah, there's a definite brown tinge in that. And you can see, because this the light here is quite a cream light, it looks maybe browner than it is. Um, so yeah, and that orange there giving us some little bubbles, and then white Jacob, and then this grey... Uh, isn't Jacob fibre, it's Norwegian fibre and it's been really curious to work on because um, spinning it up, when I was spinning it up for the project, these are the two skeins, so this is the Jacob, the white Jacob, and they were all um, the same thickness once it was all spun, but once I had washed it, uh, washed the skeins, both the Jacob, the black and the white Jacob really puffed up and gave quite a, quite a nice, I'm not sure if you can see really, but gave quite a, a puffy uh, texture, uh, really fluffed up. Whereas the Norwegian, um, even though it was the same thickness as it was spun, uh, is that gonna focus? Maybe not. It's a lot thinner, it's, it's sort of retained that thinness. Um, and so there is a slight discrepancy in the knitting because there's a little bit more oh, wrong side a little bit more air can you see you can just about see me through this bit um, because it's not sort of filled the spaces between the stitches in the same way that the black and the white has so yeah so that's going to be interesting so it'll be we'll see and then it's steeped so you knit the shawl in the round oops and then this is your steek section here you steek this which creates the triangular shawl and then you've got the spine of slip stitches that runs around the centre. I'm not sure if that's focusing. Um, yeah, so an interesting construction, which is why I wanted to have a go at it. Um, the pattern, as I think I said last week, it's a little bit vague, especially for a beginner. Um, yeah, you do have to kind of do a little bit of, of um, lateral thinking, I think, to kind of sort it out. But now, now I, yeah, now I get it. I'm in the flow <clears throat> and I'm not... I'm not winging it as much as I was maybe but now yes I'm not too worried about the stitch count as long as the pattern fits in, fits in and you can just do a little bit of judging and fudging around the the increases etc but yeah so I'm pleased with it and and perfect timing of course for the for the glorious heat waves we're supposed to be having in a couple of weeks so we shall see but yes so nice to have a whole hand spun project and uh, it's been nice to do something as, as a different construction for a shawl pattern so that one is that. I might have to spin up some more grey. Uh, this is something where myself and um, Becky from Back to Blighty podcast are, are doing together and she's had to spin up some more of her fibres. And I think, I think Becky, if you're watching, I might have to do the same. But we'll see. We'll see how far we can get. I'm just about, I've just about finished the flea stitch section. So hopefully I might be all right. Excuse me while I take a, a sip of tea. There's lots of fibre in the room now. I'm in my son's bedroom, back in my son's bedroom after all the building work has sort of died down. And it's really strange. He hasn't been in here really. He's away at university. He hasn't been in here for, well, three years. They've nearly finished. Um, and everything's been washed. It's been uh, wiped down, cleaned, dusted. But there's still a boy smell. Those of you that have had teenage boys, do you know what I mean? It's clean, everything is clean, everything's washed and cleaned in time. No, none of his clothes or anything in here. But there's still <laughs> there's still the teenage boy smell. Just a just a whiff. I'm gonna have to get some scented candles or something. Hmm. Anyway, uh let's not dwell on that. Um so what next? My next knitting project, which I think I showed you previously, 
are my party socks. They're not my party socks, but they are my Opal socks. Did I get the thing out? Yes. So these are Opal, I can't even read that. I, the reason I can't read it is because it's in, it's in German, obviously. So yes, this is the Opal, uh, oh come on, are you going to, oh, there we go. This is the Opal. And for those of you who are interested in colourways, etc., that is the colourway. Uh, and I'm really loving these. Look how jolly they are. Very nice. Very easy, obviously. And it's uh, it's nice to kind of see the pattern unfold as you go along. Um, and I was going to do a pair of socks, obviously. But do you know what? I saw a lady the other day. And she had some leg warmers on. And those of you that have been here for a while, I've, known, I've been banging on about leg warmers because my ankles get really cold um, about leg warmers for ages. Oh, I'm going to knit some leg warmers. And, and I, when I bought this, this yarn, I did think, right, I'm going to make myself some leg warmers. And then I made socks out of the last ball. But this time, I am going to make leg warmers. They're just 64 stitches, uh, a 3-1 rib um and yeah i'll see how i get on because she had them over some nice boots and i was promised a pair of dr martin boots for my 50th birthday which was last november and we haven't really been able to get to the shop in town to, to have a little look so and then it's been busy and then it's been closed again and now it's open again but now i'm busy so um yeah so maybe when i get my dr martin boots which I got married in, by the way. I got married in a pair of Dr. Martin boots. A massive, a massive princess kind of dress with a big, big poofy skirt and a corset and yeah, white Dr. Martin boots. My mother was so proud. Uh, you've got to be comfy, you know what I mean? Anyway, and my bridesmaids had white Dr. Martin boots. So, you know, we all matched. It was, it was very cool. So I need to get myself another pair of Dr. Martin boots. And uh, yes, I think these are going to be the leg warmers that slip over the top of those. So yes, that's the, the carry with you sock pattern that I will probably be taking to coffee this morning if I ever manage to leave the house. Um, and then the last knitting thing I've got on the needles really is, uh, this is a shawl I started lockdown one, you know, the, the the prequel almost to where we are now uh yeah so it was a knit along shawl and it had um this lovely mosaic border to it and at the bottom there i don't know if you can see because it's not obviously blocked there's like a lace section it's blowing out a little bit a leaf lace section uh yes so really enjoyed doing the mosaic pattern and i can remember at the time thinking ah oh, well, this lockdown hey this isn't so bad because I've got plenty of time to learn new skills and do bits and bobs and then it all went rather crazy so I did get this done in the first bit of the lockdown and then in the pattern it was a, a knit along that kind of got released a little bit got released every um, every couple of weeks but then it all went a little bit lacy and a little bit complicated and I was just like no that's not for me um, so it sort of went on hold and then I did this and I really enjoyed doing the slip stitch section of this. So I thought, oh, I'll do the slip stitch for the rest of the, the shawl. But then I managed to manage to mess it up and sort of put the slip stitches on the rear of the pattern or something. But it just didn't work out the same. And I think the reason it didn't work out the same is because the slip stitches I did on this were is on variegated yarn. And it really, really stands out. So one of the threads is a solid and the other is variegated. And you can it, you can really see the difference. The pattern really stands out. Whereas with this, it just wasn't as effective. So I think what I'm going to do is just alternate uh, a bit of a block of red, a block of pink, just to get it done and dusted, to be honest. And then um, it'll be a, a nice bright shawl for the spring summer. So yeah, so it's a decrease as you go. So you cast on on the long edge and then decreasing. But I have started to do a um, like an eye cord edging so that the edging is a little bit neater. Uh, yes, so I have got that one back out. Um, I, we I have a little spinning group with a, a couple of um, 
friends met over the internet, Julia and um, Carol from Back to Blighty and Happy Knitting Podcast and Carol. And uh, yeah, they've been, I think I'm getting bullied in that group actually to kind of get my old projects out. So um, I have, it's out, I've started it again. Okay, you can leave me alone now. Um, yeah, so it's nice to have a, something uh, jolly spring summer colours really in the knitting bag. Um, so is that all the knitting? Yeah, I think it is. So on to the spinning. So not a great deal of spinning done, not a massive amount of knitting really over the last couple of weeks. Um, but I have been doing finally, um, as you know, if you've been here a couple of, a couple of months or a little while, uh, I got gifted some beautiful fiber from, um, the fiber hut. Uh, to have a little play with and put on my podcast. So, so the disclaimer is this is was a gift, uh, and this is Whisper, the Whispy range, the Whisper range, um, and this shade is Dew. So this uh, she sent along to me, gave from the Fibre Hut to have a little play with, and it's taken me ages, but I have finally had a play with this one. She gave me this and uh, another braid, which I've also had a little play with. So I'll be hopefully releasing a little um, vlog of that, probably next weekend, I think. I've just got the last little bit to do. Um, and so there was this braid that she sent, and she also sent some other shades, excuse the rustling, these little bags of other shades. Uh, one is a pinky, I don't know if you can see that, uh, and a yellowy one, and uh, a kind of a gray one. So just the, like the sample colour. So what I did, I spun up a load of the green and just two plied it together. Is it going to focus? Yeah. So two plied it together. Really lovely. I didn't do a great deal. Just a little sample. I'll just open it out a bit. And it was so soft and light. Really, really easy to spin. Um, so you can see that kind of the blends of the greens and the limes in there. It's a real um, granny delicious green apple, spring onion, that sort of nice, lovely, bright green. Um, so that's what it was like when I two plied it. But what I also did was I did um, those little sample bits. I sort of took a little bit off and then did a, a section of each colour into um, a, a, a yarn. What's it called? Onto a bobbin, goodness me. And then I two plied it with the solid. So I two, one ply was just solid green and the other ply was kind of made up of these uh, different sections of the other colors. And the effect is really lovely. I'm not sure you can see that in real life, but it has this sort of barber pole that um, that is a different shade of color as you go along. Maybe if I do it that way, it's easier. One second can see the colours a little bit more clearly. There we go. don't know if you can see that now. It's a bit bright, the light, I think. Yeah, so can you see that the barber pole kind of goes around the blue and the pink and the grey? So that was quite a nice little experiment and I think I really like the way that that has worked out in the difference of colours. Um, and actually made me think, because I've got lots of bits and bobs of spinning, when I ever get time to do some more, I don't know. But, um, you know, if they're, if they're in the same blend range, really, of having those sections, having those um, that would essentially be self-striping if you knitted them up solidly, uh, but if you twist them around a solid colour and kind of barber pole it in that way, you've got a little bit of interest that isn't solid in the same way that it would be if you're just kind of... Um, spinning up something that has some blends of colour in there but is a little bit more um, variegated rather than those colour changes so so yeah that was quite a nice experiment that I think will mean that you can kind of use up those bits and bobs in your fibre stash really um, so yeah I need to get on to that I need to put that last little bit in my vlog and then I can post that probably next weekend as I say um, but my acquisition has been an e-spinner the Ashford E Spinner 3. It has arrived. Um, yeah, I had a really, really uh, 
boring busy couple of weeks in work and so um and then i had a, a little a little payment from equity my background is in performing and stuff and something i'd done years and years and years ago uh, i had a little repeat fee so i was like oh okay i can put a little bit of that towards an e spinner so i've been wanting one for about two years now really when i originally bought my wheel i was toying with do i go for the wheel do i go with the e spinner um, and all the advice I had was go for the wheel, that's the more traditional uh, and I'm so pleased I did, however I am still very intrigued by the e-spinner so it arrived, you have to put it together yourself, what's this about? So I did that, followed some very vague instructions I may say, um, got it together, Got it. took me a while to get it uh, working um, and then oh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I could not do it. I think I was too tired, too tired, too emotional. And um, yeah, so I sulked for a bit and, and cried for a bit uh, and then had another go. And I, I think I've sort of cracked it in theory now. It's exactly the same, obviously. The spinning motion is exactly the same, but there's just something about the the lack of control, maybe. It's, it's sort of on or off. And so it doesn't kind of your feet kind of know if your hands are struggling. Do you know what I mean? So they kind of adapt. But with the e-spinner, it's like, I'm spinning, just catch up. So, um, so yeah, that was a little bit tricky to get the, the hang of. But I think it's to do with where you sort of set that speed. But I think by the time I put it down, dried my tears, put it down, uh, I think I, I, I just about had cracked it. So I'm going to go back at it with some long staple length fibre because the fibre that came with it I think was like a merino and so uh, so yes it was quite I find merino tricky to spin anyway so I, I don't think that was a a good beginners combination for me so yes hopefully next week week after I can spend some more time experimenting with that and let you know but the the joy of it I think the speed of it is going to be great especially for applying things up that can be just like the most boring job in the world so for applying and stuff that would be great I think so yeah that's about me in terms of the fiber shenanigans yeah let's just check in I haven't got anything hidden behind me uh yes so apologies if it's a bit all over the shop that's sort of my brain at the moment um but yeah, so if you're leaving me here, that's all the fibre stuff. I'll put a little link there uh, if you would like some more fibre stuff from previous previous episodes. But if you're saying for general catch-up, so how have you been? Um, yeah, the last three weeks, uh, it's always tricky this time of term in university. Uh, if you've been with me for a while, you know I teach uh, in on a performing arts degree in university. And um, yeah, this time of year is so busy with end of year assessments, reading and marking dissertations, practical performances. I'm also directing one of the third year shows. So it has been every evening, every weekend has been taking up with marking or paperwork or talking to students or, or tutoring students or comforting students about what's next. What are they going to do with their lives? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with mine. How can I help you? Um, yeah, it's a really, uh, really difficult time not knowing what they're going out into and especially when they're going out into the creative industries, which have taken a real uh, battering over the over the last year, 18 months or so. So I can understand their worry and their frustration about not being able to to get into the industry straight away because it just hasn't opened up properly yet. But we were, oops, sorry, I banged the camera. Uh, we were able to uh, open a couple of shows, so we weren't able to have an external audience, but we have been able to have their, their split into two groups, so we were able to allow the other group to kind of come in and watch because they have to be bubbled and they have to be tested every day, um, they have to wear their masks, etc., etc. So it was really great that we had an achievement this week that we were able to open the shows and have an audience so that was great and we were hugely appreciative um, and I know the students were too so that was really nice to do that um, so it opened yesterday and we've got another two shows tomorrow and then that's it it closes so very quick run but has been a great process been really nice to work with them closely practically in the space seeing as we've been on zoom for such a long time uh, so that has been good. Um, last weekend, what did we do? Oh, it was my husband's birthday. So, lockdown birthday. 
we've all been there. So that was all right, but uh, hopefully we'll get to do some bigger celebrations later on in the year. Um, and that's it. That's the pinnacle of excitement. Work, 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 birthday. But there we go, there we go. It is what it is, it's much excitement today. So, because obviously I can go and have a coffee. What time is it? Oh, we're not gonna be late. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have a coffee with some friends and see what they've been up to. We were saying everybody must be like packing their backpacks to show each other what they've been up to for the last year. So there might be quite a mammoth da -da 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 chatter. So yes, always nice to do in person rather than on, on the on the Zoom, etc. Anyway, that's enough of my rambling on and on. So again, apologies for being a little bit late. Apologies for being a little bit all over the shop and having wet hair. I know, going outside with wet hair, my mother would go mad. I'd get a cold, she'd say, you'd get a fever, you'd get a chill. So I might dry it off quickly before I go. Um, so yes, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Uh, hopefully I will catch up with you in a couple of weeks, having made some more progress, let's hope, having hopefully mastered my e-spinner um, before I get really cross and throw it across the room. I wouldn't, of course, I'm a very placid and calm person. Um, yes, so I will catch up with you soon. Thank you so, so much for coming along and please drop me a line below or on Instagram. Always love to hear from you. Uh, but in the meantime, dialg pau and I'll see you soon. Hoi bye.